Well, good morning to you and welcome once again to our live uh, broadcast here, our Wednesday broadcast. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the other programs we've been doing recently. If you've tuned in before, um, you'll know that we've had some wonderful broadcasts recently. Um, really have um, presence of the Lord has been so gracious to us. Um, he's been with us in in mighty ways. Um, we had a meeting, an online uh, meeting last night, and um, just the presence of God came in a wonderful, wonderful, powerful way. Um, numbers of people um, were healed by the power of God um, yesterday on the broadcast and so um, that's exciting to see the gospel of Jesus Christ um, in action and so anyway welcome to you today as you join me as I was uh, praying and uh, thinking about what we're going to do today <clears throat> I felt the Holy Spirit direct me towards a certain passage of scripture and um, I had an amazing encounter with God years ago over this scripture and set me on a whole path really um, of, this in, of an incredible supernatural journey with God um, and so I'm going to share that journey with you today uh, um, <clears throat> you might want to um, <clears throat> Excuse me, you're croaky there. You might want to turn to Galatians chapter 5 if you've got your Bible handy with you today. And um, we're going to be looking at that passage of scripture in a while. And, um, you know, because as much as I'm a man who loves the things of the Spirit, you know, healings, miracles, deliverance, signs and wonders, breakthrough, all of that. Uh, and, you know, and those of you who've been watching the programmes, I think you realise that by now. Uh, I want you to understand, I'm also a man of the word as well, of the scripture, of the Bible. And so we need both. We need the things of the spirit, but we also need the word of God. And the word of God is a part of the things of the spirit as well. Uh, and so anyway, I'm just inviting a few people to the programme, just waiting a second here for the broadcast to load up and then... We're going to get underway because, you know, the message that I've got for you today can really transform your walk with God in your life in a very powerful way indeed. Um, and so I'm just asking the Lord will give me the grace to bring this message to you um, and, and, and to encourage you and help you uh, with this because it's so life transforming and so powerful. So anyway... I'm just inviting some folks to the programme and then we're going to get underway here today. <clears throat> I hope you've come with an expectancy in your spirit, in your heart, uh, whenever we gather together, because always, always, always the spirit of God comes and he meets with us. And so I'm excited about that. As I said yesterday morning, um, you get these things that you, I don't know what they call them. It's like they want to know what your mood is on Facebook. Um, and other sites and that. And yesterday morning I said I'm feeling effervescent. <laughs> and um, well pretty much the same again this morning. Fairly effervescent. <laughs> I don't really know what that totally means. But anyway. I'm excited by the presence of God. I'm happy to be a believer. Uh, happy to be forgiven by Jesus. And um, what's not to like really. Because. You know, you and I, we have such an awesome privilege that we can know Jesus Christ and walk with him and have his love and his power and his presence uh, in our life. And so there we go. Right. OK, well, I'm going to get underway here this morning. So I'm beginning to welcome uh, people to the programme here today. Coming to you live from a very soggy Isle of Wight. It's raining outside, the wind is blowing and howling. Um, it's not a particularly uh, pleasant morning out there, so I'm only sort of halfway outside broadcasting today because uh, the weather is just so bad out there and I 
haven't got enough shelter to be sort of more outside. So, uh, and unfortunately, the camera is not waterproof. Um, and so if I'm out there with the electric, you know, with the batteries and the camera and everything else, um, I don't think it's going to like it. Anyway, so let's have a look. Welcome to you today, every one of you. Lisa Arnold, morning to you. Carol Williams, Carol McCrory, Vicky Moyer. Hi, Vicky. Jane. Hi, Jane. Bala Jayanthi Pandyan, welcome to you. Um, Jitendra Chattatraya, welcome to you. Elias D'Souza in the United Arab Emirates, welcome to you. God bless you. Helene in Canada, welcome to you. As you join me here today. <clears throat> Got a bit croaky there all of a sudden. I thought it had uh, gotten better anyway. Uh, as you may have seen, um, the title for today's broadcast is Walk in the Spirit. And um, you can say, well, oh, Chris, what do you mean by that, walk in the spirit? Can you please explain that to me? Uh, and uh, that's what I'm going to attempt to do this morning, to truly explain that to you. But not just to explain it to you, show you it from the word of God and tell you how you can practically engage and walk with the Holy Spirit and get to know him. You know, you get people saying, oh, walk in the spirit. It's like, but they don't tell you how to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that, that might be helpful. Um, so <laughs> God bless you today. Uh, Kate Rivers, morning to you as well. Bless you and welcome to the broadcast. Galatians chapter five is where we're going today. Uh, right from the beginning. Evangelist Daniel, welcome to you. Uh, you know, that's where I'm going to be uh, uh, starting out today, Galatians chapter 5. Um, who knows uh, where else, uh, you know, you're gonna, <laughs> we're going to end up. But however, we're going to do that. Welcome also to Christine as well on the program. Um, Paulette Bass as well. Welcome to you. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, anyway, welcome to you all as you join me today. Uh, that's it. Well done, Helene. Galatians 5. Um, and starting have a look. at verse da, 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 16. So Galatians 5, starting at verse 16. That's where we're going to begin uh, today. And so if you've got your Bible handy, you might want to get it out and, and read it. You might just want to listen uh, as well. Um, you know, all is good. Anyway, we'll work. Eric Barfield in the United States. Welcome to Eric as well. God bless you, my friend. Hazer R as well. Welcome to you. Hazer R. Not quite sure how to say your name, but God bless you. Welcome to you. Thank you. Helene has put the scripture up there for you, every one of you. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. Just to get that out in front of you if you can. Um, don't worry if you haven't got it with you. You can just listen. I'm going to read out today as well. But sometimes it's good to see it with your eyes as well. As here it helps it to get in there. Helps it to go in there. Helps you to remember where things are as well. Familiarise yourself with the Bible. Where things are located. You know, refresh yourself with scriptures. There's something tremendously refreshing about reading the Bible. About getting into the Holy Scriptures of God. There's something powerful about it. It's unlike any other book in the world completely different from any other book in the world that's what the bible will do for you because you know as they used to say we have these are the lively oracles of god this book the bible is connected to the holy spirit which and he connects you to heaven so this book is very different than any other book amen this is a completely different book than any other book on the planet i mean there are other books connected to spiritual things, but they're not holy spiritual things. Um, there are demonic spiritual things, you know, people in witchcraft and things like that. They have got their books. I'm not going to name any titles or anything like that because I would give you the idea to look it up. But there are some things that they use um, and they obviously attract the demonic. And evil spirits and Satan and sickness and disease and curse and all kinds of horrible stuff. Amen. 
Man alive, the rain is coming in here, I tell you. Um, I might have to go further back. Hang on a second, because <laughs> I'm getting soaked here. Right, talk amongst yourselves a minute. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Sorry about that. But it's raining more than I thought. And so I needed to go a little bit further back where, from where I was. Um, so anyway. So Galatians chapter 5, friends. Galatians chapter 5 um, and verse 16 is where we're going today. Now, let me just tell you about how this thing started with me. Um, and how the Lord led me to these scriptures and led me on a completely an incredible journey with him into his presence, uh, into the miraculous, into the power of God, you know, all of that sort of thing, helping me to break through in walking with him, breaking old habits, things like that. There's a lot to this broadcast today, and, and I pray that you will, um, you know, receive powerfully from the Lord as we get into those scriptures. And like I say to you, I'm fully a man that is um, wanting the power of the Holy Spirit and doing all of that stuff. And I'm saying, saying, you, um, saying to you today um, that this is, this is one of the things that will set you ablaze uh, today for God. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I'm feeling positively <coughs> effervescent this morning. And we're going to get into the word of God. No doubt the power of God is going to touch you where you are today on this broadcast. Amen. <clears throat> anyway, um, I'll share with you uh, how this happened for me. Uh, and then you can, um, you know, you can see how God did all this stuff. I was just waiting for a few people there because people were joining with us. And I don't want people to miss really um, what God is doing here today. Uh, because it's just so, so life transforming, the message that I'm going to bring you this morning. It so changes things in your life. And I'm not trying to just say that for the sake of it. I really, truly mean that. The Holy Spirit did this incredible thing with me uh, as a result of all of this. And so <clears throat> anything good that we learn from the Lord like that, we need to pass it on to other people to try and help other people. You know, many people have helped me in my Christian life um, throughout the years. And also the writings of many great Christians that have gone before. I've studied the life of many, many of the great men and women of God that have been used powerfully by God over the centuries and learned so much and had my faith uh, ignited by reading those things as well as reading the scripture. Um one of the people that most impressed me uh, was the British evangelist Smith Wigglesworth, an audacious man of faith, tremendous anointing in ministry from a man who was uneducated, couldn't even read, read until the age of 26. Um, he was a plumber from Bradford, England, that God ignited Smith Wigglesworth with a ministry that shook the world. And uh, he did some incredible, incredible things in God. I remember reading a story one day of how Smith Wigglesworth was riding on a train. And in those days, it was a steam train, I believe. And he's riding along. He's looking out the window of the train and he sees somebody walking down the street and they get hit by a horse and cart and knocked over and killed in the street, run, run down by a big wagon. Wigglesworth was looking out the train window. He saw this happen. And he opened the door of the train and jumped off the moving train, rolled down the bank embankment, ran over to the person, laid hands upon them and raised them from the dead in the street right there. Man alive. When I read that, I'm thinking, oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. He didn't get baptized in, in the Holy Spirit 
until he was 48 years of age. So when he leapt off that train, he was older than 48. I don't know how old he was. But he was probably 50, 60 years old when he leapt off a train, rolled down the embankment and laid hands on someone who has been just been knocked over and killed and raised them back to life in the street. Man alive, if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. And I'm reading this stuff and I'm thinking, glory to God, hallelujah. This is a reserved Englishman here. Come on, people. Come on, England. <laughs> glory. Does that not get you going this morning? Does that not make you think, man alive, he jumped off a moving train. <laughs> glory. <laughs> is it just me lord i don't know that excites me anyway that gets me going man alive i want to do this stuff i want to lay hands on the sick i want to see miracles i want to pick up dead bodies and slam them against the wall and then let go of them and they fall on the ground pick them up again until they stand up alive this is what wigglesworth would do bold tenacious faith he was in a meeting and people were, somebody came forward and they were paralysed and he said, stand up. And these people were holding this person up and he said, let go of them. And they said, no, he said, let go of them. And the person crashed to the ground and the people went, oh, like this. He said, pick them up again. Stand them up like this. He said, let go of them. And they, they did it and dang, the person went down again and people were going, oh, like that. They're going, you terrible man, you cruel man. Stop it. They were going, he said, shut up. I know my business. Stand that person up again. Let go of them. The third time or whatever they did that, that person stood up, healed of paralysis. Glory to God. Man alive, that guy did some stuff. <laughs> Oh, I'm not glorifying the man. What I'm doing is I'm showing you what God can do through a man that is surrendered to him. A man that says, I can be all in all. If I just surrender to Jesus, I can have him flowing through my life. You know, and Wigglesworth was a man that he had a hot temper. Um... You know, he used to pick up his food that his wife Polly made for him. And, he, and if he didn't like it, he would throw the plate at her in, in vile temper, angry, white hot. You know, he said, I don't like this food. Whoosh, throw the plate. And then one day God got hold of him. And for 10 days he, he was praying and fasting and because he thought, this is no good. I can't be like this. I can't act like this. This is not the right thing to do to my wife. All that stuff. And for 10 days, he, he agonized with God and God. And the people said to him, what was happening in those days? And, and Wigglesworth said this. He said, he, said, I, he said, I was getting Wigglesworth out and God in. He was dying to self. And he was learning to submit to Jesus and to walk in the spirit and that sort of thing. Amen. And you can learn a lot from some of these people. You know, people that write a candid story of things like that, that you can understand that other people have problems. Other people weren't very good to begin with. Other people were stumbling and falling. But God will take you through and take you to the place of victory and grace and maturity will come into your life. And so you may have something today in your life that's a bit like that. You know, I don't know, you may not throw the plate at your wife or your, you, or your husband. You know, it happens the other way as well, you know. And you know, all sorts of stuff that God wants to break through in your life. That the fullness of the love and grace and power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will flow through you and out to the world. And that you live from the place of your spirit. You're not living from the place of your emotions and the place of your um, soulless realm, but you live from the spirit, from the inside out. Anyway, Galatians chapter 5, if you're ready, if you've got your Bible there ready, we're going to have a look at that in just a moment. But like I say, it'll transform your life. If you get hold of some of these principles, a breakthrough will come to you. Really will. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Galatians. I mean, how I got into this as well. I need to tell you this, this as well. Um, now, I'd had many powerful encounters with God um, 
before uh, this thing uh, that happened um, with the Holy Spirit, with the scriptures. You know, and I'd read the Bible a lot when I was young. I'd, I'd read the scriptures and I did read the scriptures. Um, but I went for a period of time where I really wasn't reading the scriptures much at all. If at all. And, um, and then one day I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and it went like this. And this is exactly how he said it to me. Okay. So if you don't think there would be um, emotion or uh, intonation in the voice of the Spirit, um, you're wrong. He will speak to you in certain ways sometimes. Just like I said yesterday morning, uh, when I went to America for the first time and I was in Texas, land of the cowboys, and I said to the Holy Spirit, I said, oh, I haven't heard your voice. I haven't spoken to you, sorry, um, for a while now. And he turned to me, I said, if there's anything you've got to say to me, and I'm thinking, oh, he's going to say, you know, you haven't spoken to me, Chris, you know, I don't know why I thought that, but I did um, back in those days. And, um, and he's just turned to me <coughs> and he went, yee-haw, like a cowboy. That's what the Holy Spirit said to me. I know many people go, oh, that's it, that confirms it, this guy's a, a quack, I'm turning this thing off. Listen, hang on a minute, right? I've got some more stuff to tell you. Do you not think God's got a sense of humour? Do you not think that he doesn't, you know, talk and say funny things now and again? Uh, really, do you not think that God has no sense of humour at all? He invented laughing. He invented joy. So he's got to be a funny God as well at times. Don't you think? Oh, I know this is blowing religious mindsets all around the planet, probably. God laughing? God making joke? Why not? It's like us. We can have a, a serious side to our life, can't we? And there are times when it's appropriate to be serious and not be jovial. But then there's other times to laugh. Yeah, the Bible says that Jesus was, had more joy than all of his fellows. People like being with Jesus. Was that because he was po-faced and religious and like, a, like drinking a, a glass of vinegar? You know, no, Jesus was exciting to be with, fun to be with, full of love, full of grace. Oh, and the, the, the devil of religion is going Aah! right now as I'm saying all of this. <laughs> it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Amen. <laughs> and all the religious thinking is going, ah, ah, like this. Because it can't stand freedom, can't stand joy, can't stand peace. You know, I know people, and if you were to laugh, if you were to be joyful, they don't like it. And that is weird, I'm telling you. If you don't like people being joyful, if you don't like people um, being happy, God wants to heal you. I'm telling I say that with love to you. I'm not being critical. He wants to heal you. He wants you to be joyful. He wants you to be able to celebrate. Celebration is part of our life in God. We've got a lot to celebrate. It doesn't mean everything in my life is perfect and everything is brilliant, but we've got a lot to celebrate because Jesus has shed his blood for us and made a way for us to have eternal life, to have forgiveness and to be blessed, not only in the age to come, the scripture says, but also in the land of the living as well. But religion just wants you to, to just try and hang on. That's what the controlling power of religion and state organized religion was about, was about controlling the masses, controlling the people. Keeping them in bondage, keeping you in a bit of a tilt position that you're always afraid that God's going to dump you so they can keep you coming back to their church and only their church. Keep you putting your money into their coffers, keep you controlled. That's why the Romans accepted Christianity in about AD 300 and so with Constantine and his mother and all this kind of stuff. They wanted to control their empire with, with Christianity. And so one day it was illegal to start having a meeting in your home 
All the early churches were in people's houses and in outside in the open air and places like that. We didn't have church buildings. But then it became illegal to have a, a house meeting punishable by death. And you have to go to the church. And then you have to go to the priest before you can go to God. Oh, oh I'm planning to say this. But there's one mediator, the Bible tells me, between God and man. One mediator between God and man. Who is that? The priest. Is that the minister? Is that the vicar? Is that the superintendent? Is that the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist? Is that it? No, that's not what the scripture says. There is but one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Jesus has made a way for you. You can go directly to God wherever you are at any time of the day and night because Jesus has made a way for you. Your life is hidden in Christ in God. Colossians 3.3 3. You have access to God because you're in Jesus. You don't need a man to make a way for you. Jesus is there for you. His blood was shed for you. Not mine. Not anybody else's. His blood was shed for you. To make a way for you. To go directly to God. Now God sends his gifts to the earth. And gives ministries and callings to people. Which are so much of a blessing. And so helpful. We need that as well. But you don't have to have a mediator between you and God. That is religion. And a lack of understanding of the New Testament. We're no longer under the Levitical system of having a cast of priests and only they can present before God before you. We no longer have that thing. Hebrews chapter 7 says there has been a changing of the priesthood. So now one time you had the Levites and you had the, the, the family of Aaron, the descendants of Aaron for the high priests. So you had the priests and the high priests, and they would minister on behalf of the people. But now we have a new great high priest of the order of Melchizedek, Jesus Christ, King of Righteousness, King of Peace, that's what Melchizedek means. And now we are a priesthood of all believers. You don't need a man to stand between you and to stand between you and God. Go directly to Jesus. Call on his name. Accept him as your saviour. Walk in the spirit with him. We're going to talk about that in a little while. But I pray that today God would set you free from every vestiture of religion and false teaching that seeks to keep you out of the glorious freedom and liberty that there is in and through Jesus Christ the Son of God that shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for you, my friend. Oh, The Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews that he ascended into the heavenly tabernacle and he offered his blood once for all. Once for all. Amen. Never to be offered again. The blood of Jesus was so powerful, it was offered once for all time, for all humanity, for all history. The blood, the blood, the precious blood. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. His blood was shed for you at perfect sacrifice, meeting all the requirements of Almighty God. And when you receive forgiveness from this great high priest, when you receive forgiveness and the, the covering of his blood setting you free, when you are born again, when you are mantled with a new identity from heaven, you are acceptable to God today in Jesus Christ. You don't need a man to go before you to God. You go yourself. 
Uh, there is now the Bible tells us that there is no male, there is no female, there is no Jew, there is no Greek. There is one in Messiah Jesus, not one in the priest, not one in the vicar, not one in the reverend, not one in the deacon and the bishop and whoever else. One in Messiah Jesus. Amen. And the religious spirit will hate me with a passion for saying all that stuff. But I don't care. Jesus Christ is alive and it is for freedom. The Christ has set you free. His blood has made you free. Not to yoke you again unto um, the yoke of bondage. Amen. Not again to yoke you to the yoke of bondage. But to bring you freedom and liberty. Amen. Be free today in the name of Jesus. Of all religion. Of all religion. Of all false teaching that has disempowered you as the believer. And tried to keep you as a tiny person. Tried to keep you small. Tried to keep you away from Almighty God. Oh, look full into his wonderful face. You know, understand what I'm saying? Don't be bowed down. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. There is but one Jesus who has the name that is above every other name. And worthy is the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. Glory. Bless you, Carol. Have a great day. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. And as Jane Atherton's put there, yes, let us live in that glorious freedom. Oh, what a wonderful expression. Glorious freedom today. Live, my friend, in the glorious freedom that Jesus Christ has bought for you by His blood. Walk in the Spirit. Be free today in Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. For some of you, this will be revolutionary. Because you've had nothing but religion rammed down your throat. You've had people trying to tell you, I've got to keep running up to the priest and the minister and the vicar uh, and the pastor and the evangelist, the prophet, whatever, and sort of beg at them that they might pray to, for, for, uh, for God to help you. Now, that's not saying there's not an anointing on men and women of God. There is. But what I'm saying to you today is there is freedom for you. You can know God as powerfully as anybody else on the planet. The way is open, a new and living way today through the veil of his flesh, through his sacrifice. No longer is there a veil to the presence of God like there was before the Ark of the Covenant in the temple and in the tabernacle. When Jesus Christ died upon the cross of Calvary, that veil was torn asunder and the presence of God was now being made available to the entire world. Not just the Jewish people. Now to the entire world. All in one Messiah. No Jew, no Greek, no Gentile, no male, no fe female. All one in Jesus Christ. All with one, with the same rights and privileges. The way is open. But to get to the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies, you had to go beyond the curtain. And now you go beyond the curtain now through the veil of Jesus' flesh. Through him, he brings you into the Shekinah glory of God. He brings you into the manifested presence of Almighty God. He brings you to that wonderful place where you can encounter God in your life. Oh, I feel like the glory is exploding for some of you listening to this right now. You're beginning to see this like never before. The fog is lifting. The way is being made open to you. And you're beginning to see Jesus more and more and more and more and more. Some of you just need to listen this morning. Listen. Let him touch you. I see there's a franticness down inside somebody watching me. Listen. Let him touch you. Stop 
trying to prove you're spiritual. Listen a second. He wants to touch you. He wants to meet with you. He wants to heal you. He loves you. Peace be upon you this day. Lord, I pray that you would calm the storm on the inside of that person watching me right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Send your peace, mighty Holy Spirit. Send your peace, mighty Holy Spirit, into that person now. Oh, Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. You see, there's power in the name of Jesus. Anyway, let me get back to what I was going to talk about. The Holy Spirit took us there for a direction. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5. So many years ago, I had an encounter with the Lord. As I say, I hadn't been reading my Bible much. I was encountering the presence of God in a powerful way. Different things were happening to me. But then this is what happened when on one day the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said this. And this is absolutely how he said it to me. He said, Chris, why don't you do something novel today? And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Because there was almost like a sarcasm in his voice. It was very pointed what he was saying to me. <clears throat> he said, do something novel today. And I'm like, okay. I'm thinking, what's this then? And I said, okay, what's that? And he said, read the Bible. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> and I'm like, oh, okay then. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine having that said to you by God? Do something novel today. Read the Bible. And I'm like, alrighty then. <laughs> so... Anyway, I got the Bible out and dusted it off. <laughs> Just opened it. I said, what shall I read, Lord? <laughs> this is absolutely true. I don't mind telling you of my shortcomings. And uh, he, he said, he, he said, I said, Old and New Testament. And he said, New. I thought, well, that cuts it down a bit. I said, okay, now we're down to 28 books. Right, okay. And what shall I read then? And he said, Galatians. I thought, okay. Over to Galatians. I said, yep. Yeah. What in Galatians? And he said, chapter five. I said, okay, <laughs> chapter five like this. And then he took me down to this verse 16. And he said, read. <laughs> Truly, it's what he said to me. He went, read. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, okay then. <laughs> um, and I began to read something and it changed my life. I'm telling you. And... Um, <laughs> I think God must wring his hands sometimes. I'm like, oh, no, that's funny with his people. Um, but however, he wanted to help me. Uh, and so let's read Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, get to the point here, right? And he said this. Now it says, um, and I say to them, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I thought I'm going to read it all, I'm going to go back, right? And the, um, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. Amen? Let's try that again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. It says this, it says, I say then, <clears throat> walk in the spirit... And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. Sound familiar to you? But, but, verse 18, if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. So if you want to know if anything you're doing is a work of the flesh, um, they are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, 
selfish ambitions, dissensions and heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such things there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. I'm going to leave it there for now. So I began to see that there was a, a way that you could walk in the Spirit. And if I was to do that, I would not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. See, so you've got two things going on here. You've got the things of the Spirit, the things of God, and you've got the things of the flesh. And they're, wanting, they're warring for control over every human being on earth, if you like. But we need to sow to the Spirit, then we reap from the Spirit. If you sow to the flesh, the Bible says, you will reap from the flesh. And so we need to repent at times of some of the things that we're doing. Repent means to turn away from, stop doing some of these things. <clears throat> but when you stop doing something, you need to replace it with something else, really. Uh, you know, and that's why we engage ourselves with the things of the kingdom. We engage our things selves with the things of the spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And you want the things of the Spirit to be so strong, so powerful, so charged up in your life, that really you don't, you're not interested in the stuff of the flesh. See, the things of this world, as the, as the old hymn says, um, grow, grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and His grace. The more we engage with God, the less we want to do things of the Spirit, of the flesh, excuse me, things of the flesh. And so, as the Holy Spirit that day took me to Galatians 5 and said, you know, do something novel, read the Bible today. Oh, maybe some of you, that speaks to you. Um, we've got to learn to walk in the Spirit. Well, okay, you might say, Chris, how do I do that? It's all very well you're sitting there and telling me to walk in the Spirit, but how do I do it? Well, look, there are things that you can do that build up your spiritual life and there are things that you can do that degrade your spiritual life. So which are you going to choose to do? You see, prayer, for example, builds up your spiritual life and relationship with God. Man does not live, live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God through relationship and through reading out of the scripture. Worship builds up your relationship with God and helps you to be strong and to walk in the Spirit. Living a life of forgiveness and blessing helps you to walk in the Spirit and, 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 and uh, <clears throat> keeps you from getting attached to bitterness and the demonic and giving the devil a foothold. You see, so some of these things, you begin to practice them in your life, spiritual disciplines... Like prayer, reading the word, spending time with God, you know, um, spending time with other Christian believers in the presence of God. You know, reading, letting the Lord work in your heart and mind. These things enable you more and more to walk in the spirit. And the more that you practice these things, the more that you do them regularly, the more they'll, you'll get into a flow of the things of God. You know, as the word of God comes in, as Vicky's written, it will change the way you think. Like the Bible says, <clears throat> be renewed in your mind or in the way you think. Get the hard drive in your head reprogrammed from the viruses you got in there. By what? By the washing of the word. By the washing of the word. 
Get the word of God in your heart, mind, in your spirit. God said to Joshua, meditate on my word day and night. Let it not depart from you. And as we do these things, you'll find that you'll have a clarity. You'll have a sharpness about your spirit more than ever before. As you spend time, as Brother Lawrence used to talk about, practicing the presence of God, spending time with God um, in whatever way that you find it is most helpful to you. Worship, you know, put on some incredible worship or sing unto the Lord or play your instrument or whatever it is you have the ability to do. But get into an incredible place of worship. Let God begin to lift you into his presence. See, all of these things will help you to walk in the Spirit. See, <clears throat> to keep you in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, we need to know the truth. Because the truth sets you free. Where is the truth? In the Word. Who illuminates the Word? The Holy Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Have an habitual um attitude of being with God and walking with him he'll break you free of all this stuff his anointing his presence his power will be upon your life and we need both friends the word and the spirit we need the things of the Holy Spirit and the fullness of everything that he brings to humanity and we need the word of God the Bible as well illuminated by the Holy Spirit how you can ever think to understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit I don't know because the things of the spirit are nonsense to the natural mind and cannot be understood for, stood by them. That's what the scripture says about it, the things of the spirit. The Bible was written by men who were touched by God. Men who were moved by the men of old, the scripture says. Who were moved by the Holy Spirit. Pen the scriptures. So the spirit authored the scriptures. And we've got this Henry reference to remind us of so many things that becomes alive like i said at the beginning this book is like no other book on the earth because it is connected to the throne of god itself connected to the ancient of days father god connected to the holy spirit connected to jesus there is a spiritual dynamic bridge between this book and the dimension of god the supernatural that is a good reason to read the bible But the trouble is, there's been too many unanointed preachers, too many unanointed people, un Holy Spirit filled people, just deadly speaking out of the death that's within them, just drudging through the scriptures with no power in their own life, no relationship with God, and they just spout mainly religion of people, and it puts people off. And then people think that the Bible is boring. Because they've had a boring person speak rubbish to them who wouldn't know God if he met him. A oh, man alive, I'm telling you today, God wants to break you free, to bring you into a place of liberty. The blood of Jesus Christ sets you free and he'll walk with you. Let him set you ablaze. Hallelujah, I'm seeing a vision of fire now. Let that fire blaze around your hearts and your minds. Let you have, I pray that you will have dynamic, dramatic encounters with the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray the word of God will come so alive to you. It will be a great revelation to you. It will be an explosion of an understanding from God and revelation. There are things uh, what I like to call encounter triggers that will trigger an encounter with Almighty God. Reading the Word is one of them. Praying is another. Wor all these things I've been talking about, worship, they, they will cause you to encounter God. I mean, if you're, if you're so hungry for an encounter with God, why don't you read every instance in the Bible of people encountering God? Every prophetic that encounter every prophet had every encounter people like Moses and Abraham and and Samuel uh, and Elijah and Elisha and on on it goes uh, and Peter James and John on the Mount of Transfiguration and all of those like the Apostle Paul outside Damascus all of these people having dramatic dynamic encounters with Jesus 
with, with heaven, visions of heaven, all that stuff. Read every one of those from the Bible and say, Lord, I'm hungry for this stuff. I'm hungry to engage with you in the holy spiritual realm. Not demonic stuff, not evil stuff, but the realm of God and the angels and the spiritual realm that God has. You start reading the word, you will encounter, uh, cause a trigger and encounter. You get into his presence. You know, if you're filled with the spirit, speaking in tongues, there's an incredible power in speaking in tongues. Jesus even said, you shall speak with other tongues. It's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. And the apostle Paul, who had more revelation than virtually anybody else, he said, I speak in tongues more than any of you. He understood that he was connecting and stirring himself up in God, you know. Old prophetic friend of mine I used to travel with, and we used to hold he used to hold meetings, you know, in all churches all over the world, <clears throat> and I used to travel with him, and we used to sit there before the service and speak in tongues for an hour, two hours sometimes. I said, What are we doing? He said, I'm revving up my revelator. Oh, glory to God. And we would go into the service and he would have incredible prophetic words, words of knowledge for healing, all kinds of stuff in the service. The power of God would come. Rev up your revelator. Begin to pray in the spirit. Let the spirit pray in and through you. Like the scripture says that when we do not know what to pray, the spirit prays within us. Connect to this divine uh, power that is there within you. All of these things will help you to walk in the spirit. Oh, he wants to fill you with his self, the Holy Spirit. He wants to come and fill you with light, with revelation, with illumination, with peace, with joy, with love, with strength, with power, with anointing. Oh, he wants to fill you to overflowing today. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't you ask him, Lord, fill me to overflowing. Set me ablaze. Break every stinking religious thought out of my heart, out of my mind. All the false teaching that has tried to take my liberty i reject it now only that which is true and holy of your word and truly from you oh break me free today i pray for you right now i break false teaching off of your heart off of your mind in jesus name every lie that sets itself up against the knowledge of god collapse in Jesus name as the spirit of truth touches the people of God Holy Spirit of God master illuminate the truth to your people to your children right now that they would see the truth I break deception I break lies I break religion control witchcraft nonsense off of your people right now in the name of Jesus Oh, bring in your word take every word Almighty God that I have spoken that I have preached that is good and holy and from you and may it lodge in their spirit man with great revelation right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray impact, impact in Jesus name. May the power and the fire of almighty God rest upon your life, fill you through and through, set you ablaze today in Jesus Mighty name. Oh, hallelujah. There are just some incredible truths in the word of God that will set you ablaze. I remember reading one day, so great a salvation we have received. I thought, well, how great is this salvation I've received? What does that really mean? Lord, begin to show me the greatness of, of the salvation that you have provided for me. You know, what does it mean to be sinful? What does it mean to now receive holiness and justification and righteousness from God? What does that all really mean? And I began to study these things. I began to look at the tabernacle and the temple and what it was to be um, acceptable to God under the old covenant and then under the new covenant. And I began to expand these things and the Holy Spirit began to show me incredible things. Began to set me free. Began to illuminate my understanding, my heart, my life. I got so hungry for God, I was praying and fasting. Saying, Lord, I want more of you. I need more of you. I need to know you. I need to encounter you. 
And you get hungry and you go after him. You'll find him. He'll come with his power. He'll come with his strength. He'll come with his mighty anointing. And meet with you. But if you want, just want the power of God to make you look clever. And be like, you know, like there's a man in the Bible that tried that stuff. And he got nothing. If you just think it's going to make you rich or give you money or prestige. You need to leave the ministry. Or repent. Because you're going to get nothing from God in that way. He's not here to big you up. He's here to big himself up, if you understand what I mean. He's here to glorify Jesus Christ. But if we have that place of humility and we understand it's all for Jesus. Without him we've got nothing. There's no salvation. We're utterly nothing. We're lost. And without the Holy Spirit empowering us, we can't do anything. We can't do anything. We're impotent without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus sent him to the earth and the Father. The long-awaited promise. That's why he has come to empower the body to carry out the mission of God on the earth. And that is to preach the gospel of the kingdom and expand the kingdom of God all throughout the earth. And to bring the people of the world into that kingdom. Bring them under the rulership of King Jesus rather than the prince of the power of the air. The devil. Rather than being going to a lost eternity. And that, so that's why the Holy Spirit has come. Amen. Is the light beginning to dawn? Is there something fresh Revealing in your heart today. I pray so. I really do. I don't mean that arrogantly. I'm just saying. Just receive today. The entrance of his word brings light. Amen. But see if you don't get into the word. If you don't get the truths of the word in your spirit. You'll always be a bit shaky. You'll always be able to be knocked from here to there. To here to there. Moved around by every wind of doctrine. That's what the Bible says, doesn't it? But you stick your anchor down and say, I am receiving from the word of God right now. And I am going to fortify my spirit man with the word of God. I'm going to wise up. This isn't a religious thing. This isn't a boring thing. I'm going to pick up the lively oracles of God. And I'm going to say, oh God, what do you want to say to me through this book? If I understand that just as God wrote on tablets of stone with the finger of God and gave them to Moses, he touched people, other people, <clears throat> from heaven to write down and give us this book. Do you understand that today? That is not nothing. That is written by the finger of God. Through the hand of a prophet or a teacher or somebody that God gave this to. But men, the Bible says, were moved by the Holy Spirit to bring that word. Just as God wrote that word on tablets of stone and gave it to Moses. Now he's writing it upon our hearts. His word. But he's given us this incredible i mean i think everybody'd be going oh if only i had the tablets from the 10 commandments so they could hold them you know he's given you this word here it speaks of a covenant of better promises than the tablets of stone so jesus said he said i make a new covenant with you built upon better promises and you can read about all of this in this incredible library, the Bible. So that word Bible, Bibliotheca, me library. 66 books in the Bible. 38 in the Old Testament, 28 in the New Testament. Credible archive of the words of God. But you see, it's not an archive that's dead. It's not an archive that's dead. Oh no, <laughs> it's alive. You know, I've had experience before where I was reading the Bible and it's like I was taken into the Bible. 
And I had this encounter of God. Amen. Do you receive that word today? I pray that this will spark something fresh in your whole dynamic thing. Listen, the pathway to revival and the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the great move of God. This is one of the pathways. This is one of the foundation blocks to it is the word of God. Amen. You know, I have other um, other programs where we are just fully flowing in the power of the Holy Spirit. But there are other things like this. We need to get in the word of God. And I pray to you today, I pray today that the power of God will absolutely change your life. You may need to listen to this recording four or five times to get the truth of it in your spirit. Amen. I can see your prayer request, brother. Listen to what I'm saying first, though. OK, don't keep on. Listen, because you're missing it. Trying to put your prayer request on the screen. Right. Listen. Right. God wants to impact you in your heart and your spirit. I encourage you to keep, go back and watch this several times. That so you begin to get those truths in your spirit. I'm going to put it up on YouTube as well. I've got a YouTube channel and I'm saving things like this up onto the YouTube channel so that they're there for good and people can go back and review them again and again and again and watch them and they're not going to disappear down the timeline and be gone somewhere out into the ether where they can't find them. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Just looking at some of the things that people have written here today. But welcome to every one of you that has joined me anyway. Uh, Maria Garcia as well. Um, Gulfam is with us as well. Evangelist Adiayo Omatosa Isaac. Um, I think you're in Portugal, aren't you? I'm not quite remember where you are. Maybe you just like to type on the screen where you're tuning in from today, and that would be helpful um, so people can meet with each other. Remember, we're all one together in Jesus Christ. We're all one. Wherever we are from around the world, we're all one in Jesus Christ. Amen. But um, this type of message will impact you in a powerful, powerful way. Sure, you could come to a meeting. I can lay hands upon you. You will fall down under the power of God more than likely as the anointing of God hits you. But you've got to get the word in your spirit as well. You've got to be filled to overflowing. Amen. Lisa says, my niece came on last night because I shared. Praise God. Um, your other friend, Anthony, came on uh, last night. I think it was Anthony. Uh, and he got healed last night. Because you shared, Lisa. And you see how this thing works, people? You see how this thing works? Let's just take a second. Before I get into that, let's take a second here. Let's pray for Gulfam Matu. Uh, Gulfam needs a new job and needs a better job. So, Lord, we do pray. We come into agreement with Gulfam that you open the door for a better job for Gulfam Matu in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father, that a better job will come for him in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, open the door to a better and more prosperous job in the name of Jesus. We agree together on that one. But you see, uh, tonight, uh, today, Lisa shared this broadcast last night and... Uh, her friend came on for the first time, I think. I don't know. I'd never seen him before, I don't think. And he got he instantly healed of a two-year standing problem. He had been told by the medical profession was incurable and couldn't change. And all because Lisa pressed the share button. Amen. And so you see, he's on now, look. Anthony's watching now, look. Hallelujah. Feeding his baby. See, Anthony got touched by God. Because Lisa pressed share. And you see, that's how the, these things happen. That's how it happens. So as you share it, the broadcast with people, people come on and then God does something for them. You, you're like an evangelist bringing people to a meeting where they can encounter uh, the power of God. Or you're a person from the church who said, I'm going to bring my friends to church. I hope they're going to get saved. This is church. It's online church. If two or three are gathered together, there am I, God says, in the midst of them. Amen. And so I pray today that you 
We'll watch this video. There's some powerful truths in there. You really need to get them in your heart and in your spirit, set you free and enable you to walk closer with God than you've ever done before. I guarantee it because I know I've done it myself and it worked for me. The Holy Spirit taught me this. He showed me what to do and breakthrough came in my life. You know, people often say, you know, how come there's so much of the presence and the power of God in your life, Chris? Get hungry for him. Go after him. Do some of the things I've told you. And I tell you what, you will find breakthrough. You will find encounter. You will find revelation and healing and the power of God. Oh, I tell you, in Jesus name. Maria Garcia says, Lewis got healed because I shared. Praise God for that. Um, I don't know if you mean the program or you shared with him. I don't know. But anyway, praise God, Lewis has gotten healed. And you see, people are getting healed. Just connect people to what the Holy Spirit is doing with all of us online here. Because see, what happens when we come together, we join the anointings together, we release the power of God in unity and prayer around the world, and miracles take place. You can be part of an online worldwide revival just by sharing the broadcast. You see, you don't know who's watching. The next Billy Graham could be watching and get touched by the power of God because you press the share button. Maybe you are the next Billy Graham watching this and the fire of God is going to hit you and cause you to bring a massive breakthrough of revival in your nation, in your country or around the world. Who knows? There is diamonds in the rough and God is looking. He's looking for those whom he can show himself strong on their behalf. Don't be like the 10 Israelites in, out of the 12 that said, oh, well, we're grasshoppers and we can't do this thing. They had the wrong understanding of who they were and the wrong understanding of who God is. But Joshua and Caleb were men of a different spirit and they said, we are well able to do this. Why? Because they thought they were clever. No, they knew God was with them. Oh, hallelujah. They knew that God was with them. And they said, we're well able to do this. Why? He's here. Hallelujah. Oh, he wants to give you that confidence. Father God is with you. Jesus is on your side. The spirit of God is right with you. And he says, I'm with you. Go for it. Oh, hallelujah. You're not a grasshopper. You're not small and tiny. Greater is he that lives in you than he that is in the world. There is treasure in the earthen vessel. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Receive that today in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, bless you. Thanks for being on the program. Thanks for being on the broadcast. If you haven't watched the whole of the program, I do encourage you to check back and watch today's broadcast because there is life changing truths in this program that will set you on fire and set you free. And I know many of you, you want the power of God, the fire of God, the anointing of God. You want a breakthrough in your situation, in your church, in your ministry and all of that stuff. I want to pray for you right now that the power of Almighty God will impact your heart, impact your spirit, man. That you will encounter Almighty God. Father God, I pray today in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. That you would touch that one watching, that uh, pastor, that evangelist, that teacher, that prophet, uh, that apostle, uh, every person, that, 
that member of the congregation of God that you want the fire of God you want the power of God to touch you I pray right now Lord as they humble themselves before you as they abandon the things of the world may the fire of God come upon you in Jesus name may the power of God break through in your life break through in your ministry break through in your community I speak healing and restoration to you and your family in Jesus name bone disease go now in Jesus name somebody watching me in India and your family somebody has bone disease Lord Come out of that family completely. All bone disease that came down the family line. Somebody in India, people in India, in Jesus' name, be healed. Limbs be straightened. Skeleton be renewed. Oh, glory. Send your fire, Lord. Touch those people now in Jesus' mighty name. And whether you're live now or you're watching the recording, just receive that now in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, oh la basiko shanda. Receive that now in the name of Jesus. Somebody is going to play this to somebody I believe who's blind. Blind eyes, open in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Blindness, spirit of blindness, go. Come off of that person now in the name of Jesus. Receive your sight in Jesus' name. Send me the testimony. Put it on the thing. We want people to know that we have a God that can open the eyes of the blind, unstop the ears of the deaf, heal people of cancer and um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and bowel disease and liver disease uh, and uh, all sorts of horrible things. Diabetes, anything. Jesus can break through in your situation. There is not a demon that cannot be cast out. It doesn't matter if you are married to the devil himself. Jesus Christ has set you free. You think that the witch doctor is powerful? You think that the juju man's powerful? You think the guru's powerful? You wait till you meet the resurrected son of the living God, the Lord Jesus Christ, face shining brighter than the sun. Oh, hallelujah. Name it as above every other name. I pray for freedom for you. Fear, go right now. I see somebody, you've been cursed. By the witch doctor. You've been cursed by somebody in witchcraft. Satanism, whatever. I, it, oh. If you haven't, you need to accept Jesus Christ right now. And then I'm going to pray for you right now. So join with me now. If you don't know Jesus Christ, join with me right now. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer, my dear friend. I pray that the Holy Spirit will con convict you of your sin and your need for Jesus right now. Now humbly come before God with me right now. Stand, kneel, sit down, whatever you want to do. But open your heart to God right now. And I'm going to pray for you and you're going to accept Jesus Christ right now. Okay? Whether you're watching the recording or live, makes no difference. The same power, the same transaction will happen with God. The same power of the Holy Spirit will touch you. Okay, my friend? God bless you. I'm so glad that you tuned in today. Are you ready? Pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come and live inside my heart. And be my saviour. I renounce all the works of darkness and all things to do with Satan. And I accept you alone as my personal saviour and my God and my king. Fill me now. Come and live in my heart. Break every curse off of my life. Just repeat after me. Break every curse off of my life. 
and set me free from all guilt and shame. I receive your peace right now. Amen. Amen. Now I want to pray for you. Those of you who prayed that prayer, I want to pray for you right now. I come against every curse, every demonic spirit that's been in and around you. You've accepted Jesus Christ. You belong to him right now. I cast that devil out of you in Jesus' mighty name. I break the power of every demonic spirit in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Come out of the people now in Jesus' name. I break the power of all Satanism and witchcraft, new age, uh, occult, guru, false religions. I break the power of every demon associated with every other religion in the world except Jesus Christ and Christianity and the Holy Spirit. Right now. Come off of them in Jesus' name. Every cultist thing as well. I break the power of it off of your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Set them free, Lord. Every demonic spirit. Every false spirit. Break the power of Mormonism in the name of Jesus. Jehovah's Witnesses a spirit as well. Command that off of you in Jesus' name. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam. Every religion, I break the power of every ungodly influence over your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Because he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father, God Almighty, except through me, through the door of Jesus. Be free, bondage go, curses lift. In Jesus' name, uh, sicknesses that were inherited and put in there by demonic spirits because of this connection to false gods and false religions and curses. I break the power of it now in Jesus' mighty name. Right now in, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak the peace of God to every person. Receive the love of God right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Oh, just receive his presence right now. Every twisting of the limbs be straightened out right now. I, saw, like I see somebody moving and cracking as this thing is lifted off of you. You get untangled from this demonic bondage in Jesus' name. You can't drink of Jesus and drink of the cup of religion as well. It's a bitter cup. Religion binds up. Jesus sets you free. Amen. Glory to God. If you've been touched on this broadcast... Share it with your friends. Share it with people. Help them to get free today. In Jesus mighty name. Love and blessings to you all. I'll be back again. Um, for the next program. Whenever that's going to be. God bless you. You take care. I love you. And I pray that God will bless you today. If you've been blessed by the ministry you've received today. You can help us as well. Um, you know, there's a PayPal thing on my site and you can always um, donate through that if you want to, um, to help us continue on with the work that's ever expanding. More and more people are hearing the word of God. More and more people are getting touched. And so if you want to help us in that way, you can. So I don't, I'm not big for doing all this stuff that people do about money, but I tell you, it does help to make things work and to keep things going. Amen. But God bless you today. Amen. Take care. Bye-bye.